Hi, I'm Tom Edwards, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Gen Z. You know, I have three Gen Zers in my house. They're 15, 12, and 10. Their behaviors are just so different from what I experienced growing up. The, the, the level of connectivity, the amount of entertainment that's available, and the amount of control that they have as individuals to control their experiences is something to definitely pay attention to. So in this video, I'm going to touch on various territories that are potentially emerging from a technology and behavior perspective that are going to have a profound impact on how we connect with Gen Z moving forward. This is going to include technologies that empower Gen Z individuals, the role that AI is going to play in developing uh, experiences for, uh, for Gen Z, as well as how the, the concept of synthetic reality is also going to affect them. Hope you enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Tom Edwards, and today we're going to talk about innovation to reality, Generation Z, and the evolution of experience. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of the Agency Business, and what we're going to look at today is we're going to take a deep dive into how experiences have evolved, the impact that technology has on Generation Z and their behaviors moving forward. So I have three Gen Zers. I've got a 15, a 12, and a nine-year-old in my home. And seeing how they've grown up over the past 15 years, it's definitely been a different experience in terms of how they embrace technology, the impact and role that it has in their everyday life. You know, I grew up in the late 70s. So my earliest technology influences obviously came from Star Wars, huge Star Wars fan. I loved all things space, robotics, um, anything to do with technology. But growing up in the 80s, I had really limited uh, access to connectivity. So during this time, a majority of experiences were self-contained, they were predetermined, and they were isolated. So if I wanted to watch Robotech, which is one of my favorite shows about giant robots, I would have to watch it every Saturday, or I would have to wait months to catch up. I'm a huge gamer, as are my kids. So gaming at the time during the 80s was very self-contained. You know, co-op was sitting on a couch, you know, next to someone. And from a computing perspective, it was incredibly isolated. It was more of an extension of word processing and utility versus just having constant, always-on connectivity. So as I think about Gen Z, and Gen Z, there's, there's debate about when it actually starts and stops from, the, you know, the post-millennial group cohort. For me, Gen Z starts between 1995 into about 2010 from a birth perspective. So even here, even if you think of the mid-90s, you start thinking about the shift in experience. You think about usability through graphical user interfaces. You think about connectivity through the World Wide Web. And you begin to see the dawning of intelligence, such as an artificial intelligence system beating a chess grandmaster. So as my kids continue to grow up, mine were born 2002 on, you think about the world we were living in at the time. So currently, primarily everything computing was primarily on the desktop, but everyone was connected. When my youngest was born in 2007, that's when we had the launch of the iPhone. You know, that in a lot of people's eyes was this whole uh, transformational innovation with the consolidation of all these different form factors and beginning to see this kind of elimination of multiple barriers. One of the other things, though, that's really key to note here is that in 2008, I feel like the launch of the App Store is what really started to put us down this path towards consumer empowerment that is so incredibly important to Gen Z uh, moving forward. So as I think about as I think about then 2008 through 2012 and the rapid acceleration in terms of how technology enhanced consumer empowerment, you start looking at the rise of user-generated content, the start of viral video. You start seeing accessibility and empowerment of the individual through social platforms like Twitter that really started to shift the way in which we consume and curate information. Then you see the evolution of, even from a marketing perspective and how we begin to communicate. We see brands are becoming more conversational. And in 2011 is when you really begin to see the shift in celebrity and how that was being redefined. It was no longer about influence coming from Hollywood. It was more around some of the specific, whether it was YouTube celebrities or whomever it may be. 2012 led to the rise of visual expression through memes and storytelling. So as we continue along this continuum, 
you begin to then see this kind of shift towards from, from desktop now into the shift to mobile first and how this empowerment is accelerating more control with individuals, specifically with Gen Z. So by 2015, there's this, con there's this concept that everyone's a publisher and co-creation is the new normal. You start to look at some of the statistics, 400 million selfies <laughs> snapped every single day. You start looking at 69% of Gen Zers have their own YouTube channel in terms of creation of content. Then in 2016, you start to see this shift from social media into social messaging. And I'll touch more on that as we move forward. 2017 has been all around this rise of conversational experiences and the shift towards AI. And Gen Z definitely has opinions about both conversational voice-based experiences and artificial intelligence. Then as we think about how we're going to evolve experience and continue to connect with Gen Z, we're going to look at things like computer vision, the rise of virtual agents or proxies that are going to be there uh, to help us to facilitate connection of experience. You start looking at augmented reality at scale. Then you start looking at the adoption and shift towards ambient computing. And the real key takeaway here for those looking to connect with Gen Z or build experiences that are going to be relevant, it's the idea that multimodal is the new normal. That basically means everything from desktops to mobile to vision to touch, <clears throat> excuse me, to vision to touch and to voice. So in order to fully understand all of this, kind of frame this into three core territories that basically showcase how through experience we're going to be able to continue to connect with Gen Z moving forward. Now the key territories to think about here are technology that impact behavior and empower. So empowerment and ultimately control of experiences is incredibly important to Gen Z. The rise of intelligent systems and artificial intelligence that are going to enhance experiences, create opportunities to provide either predictive services or fundamentally change the way that Gen Z is going to interact with their mobile devices is a core territory to focus on. And finally, it's this idea of environment. And it's less about trees and you know the environment and that, that, <laughs> that construct, and really more about this idea of synthetic reality the blending and merging of digital and physical in the creation of new types of user experiences that go beyond traditional digital and pixel, and even in some ways, this idea of, of tangible user inter interfaces. So let's start with Empower. So Empower, again, is you think about Gen Z, you think about how it, the technology is going to empower consumers to create, to own, and to democratize. So 74% of all online traffic is actually video content. And you think about the role that video plays, you know, in connection with Gen Z and the desire to control the experience. One of the core things to consider here is actually nonlinear video. So there's the idea, as you can see with PlayStation here, the blue dots equal either contextual hotspots or you can provide branching type scenarios or experiences to where it's more of a choose your own adventure type of experience to where the Gen Z individual is in full control of the content that they're connecting with. So next, I wanted to touch and shift gears, you know, video content into social media and social messaging. So in 2016, social messaging actually surpassed social media in terms of active users. And it's really interesting because we've seen this evolution within Gen Z where they used to spend you know, a lot of time texting. Now, three or more hours per day is actually spent in messaging applications. And also 80% of their time in general is spent within apps. So the reason for this is that there's an expectation with Gen Zers that real time matters. So there's an expectation for one-to-one -one communication. And then you also look at this idea of both on-demand it, it, again, carrying this idea of on-demand forward to where whether it's real-time or asynchronous, they have the ability to control a conversation through a single conversational thread. You know, there's an expectation around the usage of chatbots in terms of being able to answer questions on demand. So again, social messaging from an experience standpoint is incredibly relevant for you know, making connections with Gen Z. Then you start thinking about another behavioral shift you know, we touched on it before, this idea of everyone is, is a publisher. So this is especially true with Gen Z because you've got about 69% of them that view the camera as a platform. So we conducted some proprietary research on this topic. 
66% of them have their own YouTube channel, and 83% of Gen Z is using some type of effect-based filter. And this is honestly going to be one of the next big battlegrounds, which will be enabling camera experiences and new forms of data that can be infused within augmented reality filters. So again, then you think about technology and how it scales, you know, publishers and providers such as Snap and Facebook and Apple understand that in order to truly create scale, they have to empower consumers, especially Gen Z. So developers and other third parties are going to create these experiences on their behalf. And consumer empowerment is incredibly powerful at accelerating adoption. So the more that we can take and enhance these experiences, and it's more about this democratization of AR, specifically for Gen Z. Again, this is all about, it's less about creation of content and more about how do we as organizations, marketers, and brands enable experiences through compelling and contextually relevant effects. So you're seeing this now also with the upcoming, with the release of iOS 11 and AR kit. So with the new iPhone and now with the new Google Pixel, you're seeing a rapid acceleration of processing capabilities on the devices to where it's going to be able to take and enable much more powerful processing of both AR experiences that are driven by AI systems, as well as taking on more of the processing power directly on the hardware. So for Gen Zers thinking about AR, Within my research, I found that most are familiar, at about 49% of Gen Zers are really familiar with augmented reality. And you can definitely expect both Gen Z and millennials to be the ones to drive the quickest adoption around the specific technology. You know, there's also an interest in, you know, the evolution of wearables here as well that connect into AR and enhance AR experiences, such as glasses. So again, that was another kind of key territory to consider. And from a virtual reality perspective, Gen Z is also really interested in virtual reality, with over 79% of Gen Z showing interest in connecting via VR. But it's a little different than you might expect. It's more around the idea of connection and connecting with one another and collaboration here. So Facebook really views virtual reality as this method to connect physical and digital, and kind of this is their bridge towards the North Star of virtual computing. So again, the key here is about how do we continue to empower consumers to take control and own the experiences. And so everything from virtual selfies to watching 360 degree video, this is an ideal environment for Gen Z to continue to connect, collaborate, and just control more of the experiences. So again, it's how do you enhance these immersive experiences? Then you also think about, again, going back to this idea of on-demand content. And now you can also shift and focus around co-viewing specifically with Gen Z, which is they can essentially collaborate, gather in a space, vote on the types of shows that we want to watch together on YouTube. So already watching three hours of on-demand content online a day. So now doing it in virtual reality with their friends, being able to take and select programming is something that's, uh, that is uh, something to keep an eye on. One of the other core things to really watch is the potential rise associated with esports. Now, it's been a rapid rise. My 15 year old always jokes that, you know what, he wants to be a professional esports athlete, and esports is athletics of the mind. Gaming's a $100 billion industry. There are about 665 million people watching other people's streams via Twitch or whichever, or on YouTube. 300 million people now globally are watching esports. Esports is all about playing, sharing, competing competitively, and again, it's about the empowerment of this. So on average, you know, talked about the, the three hours that Gen Z actually watches on-demand content. They also spend about an hour and a half every day gaming. So we actually wrote an ebook on this topic, and we use machine learning to basically derive psychographics and new models of the individuals to associate personalities and affinities with certain game types and game functions. So again, this is another key area to focus on as you look at this kind of evolution of experience and impact for Gen Z. Now, when you start thinking about enhancing experiences, so again, Gen Z is all about the empowerment of experience. Now, enhancing through intelligent systems, you start thinking about the role that both voice-based systems play. So right now, the voice-based market is about 35 million consumers in the U.S. are, are essentially using voice-based systems. That's everything from Siri to the Amazon products, uh, the Amazon voice services to Google Assistant. So you start thinking about the role of artificial intelligence and specifically Gen Z. So 
AI has definitely been in the headlines over the course of the last year. There's a lot of focus and emphasis on the integration of AI, the usage of machine learning and deep learning across various types of product types. When it comes to Gen Z, 43% of Gen Zers, from my, according to my research, are familiar with AI. And there's definitely an excitement heading into how AI-based systems can enhance their lives moving forward. So as you start thinking about the role that it can play, there's a lot of excitement, really specifically around this idea of intelligence augmentation, essentially being able to take and enhance their daily lives. You know, it's less about this idea of a super intelligence or, you know, a hive, AI, hive mind AI taking over the world, but really a lot of excitement around, is this going to be able to make my life more efficient and give me more control? So what we found through a variety of different studies, again, referencing the esports study, we found that building on top of psychographics, so understanding the affinities that are associated with the Gen Zer and their ability to connect that back to an area of interest, say like whether it's a multiplayer game, a fighting game, first person shooter, et cetera, psychographics are incredibly important. There's an expectation around this idea of predictive APIs. So essentially being able to take and predict future needs and learn behavioral patterns was an area that was of interest. There is also interest and some skepticism, but there's interest around this construct of the proxy web, which essentially means we see this advancement of virtual assistants that basically are offloading everyday functions with individuals. So Gen Z, is they're interested in scheduling professional appointments and kind of managing personal time when it comes to things that they're most likely to offload via this idea of the proxy web. And one of the other really core things to consider with Gen Z in particular, they're growing up in a time to where they're in control of the message from a consumer-centric marketing perspective. As we begin to onboard more proxies on our behalf in virtual assistants, it's going to become very paramount that you're also able to connect through various algorithms to connect with Gen Z. And it's also about enhancing the experience more so than just pushing an experience forward. So again, it's the idea of control. And it's also the idea of making sure that your brand has associations and affinities with other products and an algorithm will be able to pick up and make the connection beyond just keywords. And finally, what I think about is I also think about the evolution of mobile and mobile experiences and how Gen Z is going to impact this. So what I see happening is I definitely see a shift to service model developing. There's going to be a time when there may be disintermediation of brands to where right now it's all about the native applications on the phone. Right now we have hundreds of apps on our phone where we may only use you know, 10 or so. But the reality and the expectation of a Gen Z individual is as more and more services are managed by specific virtual assistants, the existence of a native application will most likely shift towards more of a middle tier layer. And what I mean by that is that there's going to be a bundling of services to drive this kind of ease of connection and this expectation for on-demand control. So we'll see this model shift from hundreds of native applications to a virtual assistant that then is driving the ecosystem of connection into or tapping into these various services and, and pulling an experience forward. This then is gonna to lead to an evolution to where the mobile device in and of itself is gonna become just another part of an interface across a larger spectrum and connection of sensors, et cetera. And this finally leads into the idea of environment and the shifting of reality. So we're going to see a rapid rise and acceleration of computer vision and the role that is going to play in redefining discovery and usage of the mobile device for less from a search and retrieval standpoint, more towards a visual discovery tool. So you'll see kind of this rise of computer vision and virtual assistants. You'll see this connection again of these agents and proxies and this bundling of services and this connection into other areas of interest that are gonna be just a natural extension for a Gen Z individual. You also then think about the idea of moving from augmented reality to mixed reality and the ability to interact spatially with digital elements. It's gonna become just a normal everyday occurrence with a number of Gen Z individuals. And then finally, you begin to pull all of this together. You pull together location data, you pull together this idea of virtual assistance, you pull this idea of augmented reality, and then the propensity to want to have some type of wearable device. Then you begin to see the potential for synthetic reality, which is essentially taking and redefining all of your environment. The, the line between physical and digital continues to blur, but it's highly personalized to you as an individual and how you interact with your everyday environment. 
And ultimately, this is also going to lead to new forms of virtual economies. So what you're going to see ultimately happen is you're going to see Gen Zers that are able to use, you know, uh, basically this is an example of DMarket to where it's a virtual economy that stitches together multiple virtual items into a single marketplace. So thinking through new models and the ways to evolve physical project products and digital experiences is all going to come together and be managed through these new virtual economies and new business models. So when it comes to Gen Z, it's important to understand how technology is impacting the acceleration of experience, the role that intelligent systems play, how you can empower Gen Z to create experiences, and ultimately the role that this blending of digital and physical is going to play. All right, that's it. So we now all have a great understanding of some of the, the core territories that are gonna be of interest for Gen Z. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Twitter at Blackfin360. Otherwise, you can uh, find all of the content regarding Gen Z, eCarrot3, the evolution of experience, etc. at blackfin360.com. Have a great day.